This week, you're going to learn a little bit more about data types, and you're going to learn uh, different versions of console.read and console.write. Um, you'll also be learning uh, character testing methods and character conversion methods. There is a video on the lesson key points that you can watch. It goes through all the material and walks through the code with you. Uh, and once you finish that, you are going to want to go through the uh, Code Easy tutorial and complete those interactive exercises. For the interactive exercises, the ones that I thought could give you trouble, I actually either used Code Easy's hint or I'm giving you my own hint <laughs> to help you complete them. So you're probably going to want to pull this up and print it out before you go through those exercises, because I guarantee this is going to help you. Because um, there was a couple where the directions I thought were a little fuzzy. So, so um, for area calculator, you know, I thought you might not know how to calculate the area of a circle. And so here is the um, equation for that. Uh, it's pi times radius 2. In the exercise, it tells you pi is 3.14. Um, and to get the radius squared, it's just radius times radius. Um, but you can see for this one, one more calculator algorithm, I actually uh, gave you a little algorithm here to help you with the processing so that you know what you're supposed to do. Um, output character number, my little helpful hint here deals with subtracting one uh, from your subscript uh, because the sub subscripting has to begin at zero. Okay, so you might want to read through these. Uh, these are ones that, again, I thought you might have trouble with. Okay, so hopefully this will help you and uh, you won't get frustrated. Once you complete everything uh, and you have your score showing, and let me show you what that looks like. I think you guys are all familiar with this though. Okay, so it shows me how many tasks you solved. Um, I want a screenshot of this. And then you will upload that into the Dropbox. And this is actually fairly short. There's only 13 tasks in the tutorial. Uh, then uh, the lab assignment uh, involves writing a couple programs. Um, I did notice when people were using .NET Fiddle um, that you've kind of forgot a uh, version. 4.7.2 cannot handle string interpolation. So if you want to print um, what you're storing in a variable next to a string, um, you have to use the concatenation operator. So it looks something like this. Um, you've got your string in double quotes. So here's my result. And then you've got the concatenation operator. Okay, so result is a variable. You want to print out what it stores, plus, and then you've got your string. This is how you have to format it if you're using .NET Fiddle. If you're using Visual Studio, then you can use string interpolation or whatever you want. Okay, so that might be uh, enough incentive for some of you to download <laughs> Visual Studio. I, I do think it's easier to use Visual Studio. Um, so uh, program number one, uh, this is very similar to the examples in the lesson key points. So when I tell you something is similar, um, that is your clue to go back and look at those lesson key points because it'll definitely help you. Uh, but you're going to create a program that allows the user to enter a character, checks the character to see if it's a number or letter and displays a message. If it's a letter, you need to see if it's upper or lower case. 
And if it's not a letter or number, you need to display a message that it's not a letter or number. And the program should loop six times. So you're going to determine the name of the program, the namespace and the class, and your output should look similar to this example. There's a lot of examples in the key points. So um, if you do get stuck with how to process this or how to put it together, um, let me know and I am happy to help you. Um, once you're done with the first program, you are going to modify it and you're going to let the user determine how many times the program is going to loop. Okay, so that means that above your loop, you need to prompt the user, um, you know, say how many times or how many characters you want to enter. You need to read that in and then you need to adjust your for loop. Uh, this second program is very similar to the last example in the lesson key points. Um, almost identical. The main difference is that um, you are going to be using console.writeLine instead of console.write. Okay. And so here um, you're basically reading in the phrase and then you are looping through the queue and you're displaying one letter on each line. So that is the assignment. Um, make sure when you turn this in that I can see all of your code and that I can see all of your output. So that might mean you have to do a couple extra screenshots, okay? I need to see the code. <laughs> so <laughs> don't chop that off. Um, I've been pretty lenient on that so far, but um, we're getting to the point where if I can't see all your code, you're gonna lose some points. So make sure that I can see everything, okay? And then you'll submit that. Uh, the only other thing required this week is our discussion. Uh, the daily experience with code. So we have learning outcomes in this class that we have to address. And one of them is students will identify how the quality of code affects our daily experience and interaction with technology. So we all interact with code in our everyday lives. Um, in fact, we, we are constantly using apps on our phone or apps on our computer. And so what I'd like you to do is post the name of an application you believe is well-made and that you enjoy using. You should explain what features make the application easy to work with and why you like it. And then post the name of an application that you do not like and explain why you do not like it. Include a feature or enhancement that would make the application better. Okay, and then you are going to read your classmates' postings and reply to two of them. Okay, and make sure your postings are in full sentences, grammatically correct, and positive. Okay, so I will go ahead and do an example. So my example. Um, I'm just going to call it apps that I like and dislike. So one app that I really like is actually the Target app. Okay, uh, so I'm going to pause this while I write this in. All right, so I finished my entry on my in my own personal life on an app that I like and one that um, there's a feature that I don't like in it. So the app that I like is my Target shopping app, actually. Um, I'm pretty busy this semester, so I do, um, <laughs> I let my fingers do my shopping and then I go pick it up. Super, super easy and simple. And uh, Target just makes it um, seamless. I, it's, they're so flexible. They basically let you come get it within 24 hours. Um, 
you can tell them when you're coming. They uh, they watch you on the GPS. Uh, the whole process is super simple. So I love it. Um, that's probably one of my favorite apps. Um, I also have a Fitbit um, that I use for logging activity. That's part of the reason I bought it. Um, so it, it I like you know the miles and the step feature. But I also started using it to log um, food and meals. And um, suddenly it was like double and triple logging whatever I ate, which was super annoying because you're like, whoa, I haven't eaten that much. And then you go look and you're like, oh my gosh, it entered this thing, you know, two and three times. Um, so that's definitely a bug uh, that made me dislike <laughs> that app. Um, so I would say, uh, as far as enhancements go, fix the bug. Um, and then it would be really nice uh, if they allowed you to enter like recipes and that kind of thing. Uh, and then they would break it down nutritionally. And, um, you know, you can even figure out, you know, how many calories were in the meal. I think that that would be a super nice enhancement to have. So um, this is my example. And if you guys are one of the first to come out here and post, you do need to reply to two classmates and you certainly can reply to mine if there's nothing else to reply to. So that is what you guys are gonna be working on this week. Uh, if you do have any questions or if you run into problems, let me know. I am definitely here to help you. Uh, if after going through Code Easy uh, and the lesson key points, if you still are fuzzy on uh, the data types or council.read, I do have additional uh, tutorials here that you can walk through uh, and hopefully uh, you will understand any everything. But if you do not, please reach out because I am happy to meet with you and go through anything that you do not understand.